One of my pet pursuits is keeping track of how the news media describe those things in the news that increase or decrease. I can generally rely on the fact that the same verbs will be used repeatedly in the same situations. One of the first things I noticed is that while certain things skyrocket, other things tend to mushroom. Medical costs skyrocket. The national debt doesn't do that. It mushrooms. And experts warn, if present trends continue, both of these things will eventually go through the roof. But mushrooming is not the only thing the national debt does. It also balloons. There aren't too many things that balloon. The annual budget deficit used to balloon. Then for a while it didn't balloon. Now it balloons again. And by the way, people can balloon as well. I remember reading in the tabloids once that the actress Delta Burke had ballooned to some weight that apparently the publication found unacceptable. So, thus far, we've skyrocketed, mushroomed, and ballooned. But let's not forget snowballing. You know what snowballs? An investigation. What happens is an inquiry becomes an investigation, and the investigation begins to snowball. And what does it snowball into? Right, a full-blown probe. And if the probe uncovers enough dirt, it could possibly mushroom into a full-blown scandal. Then we have the case of swelled. During the 1990s, job roles swelled. By the way, I've often wondered if those job roles are at all similar to the welfare roles we used to hear so much about. Just between you and me, I've never actually seen welfare roles, but I'm sure that with a little margarine or jelly, they're quite delicious. And it's certainly heartening to see the food stamp program working so effectively. Getting back to our subject here, I've found that one of the best places to keep an eye on these up and down words is Wall Street, financial reporting. For purposes of this activity, I'll use hypothetical examples of economic activity that don't actually reflect recent conditions. I can't keep adjusting this material according to the whims of the economy. And besides, this is about language, not finance. Just to review, we've already skyrocketed, mushroomed, ballooned, snowballed, and swelled. Now, as we enter the world of Wall Street, we add a few simpler verbs, climb, surge, and jump. The stock market climbed today as prices surged on news that housing starts had jumped 10%. Lots of action. Another big thing on Wall Street is soaring. Stock prices soared today as reports showed earnings were up sharply. Or they may have shot upward. At any rate, upward is good. I remember one time hearing Lou Dobbs himself telling me that the Dow Jones Industrials had vaulted upward 200 points. And on the same day, not to be left too far behind, the long bond inched higher. Then we have the very special case of spiraling. The nice thing about spiraling is that it can go in either direction. As medical costs have spiraled upward, the quality of medical care has spiraled downward. And not only do these two medical numbers spiral upward and downward, both of them are actually capable of spiraling out of control. Spiraling downward brings us to the verbs for things that are falling. For some reason, Downward verbs are more colorful than upward verbs. Downward is where we discover plunge, plummet, and nosedive. You can always tell when a bull market is over, because housing starts plunge, new car sales plummet, and orders for durable goods take a nosedive. At a time like that, stock prices are usually on the verge of collapse. Or, instead of collapsing, they may simply tumble drop sharply, or go into a tailspin. And if stock prices are in a tailspin, you can be sure it won't be long before they find themselves in a dizzying freefall. Continuing with bear markets, not all days are so dramatic. Occasionally, prices only dip slightly. Dip slightly is the opposite of edge higher. And before we leave these words for increasing and decreasing, I would like to make special mention of beefed up. I remember reading once that in anticipation of a visit by Yasser Arafat, security at the United Nations had been beefed up. Arafat being a Muslim, of course, beef would have been the preferred meat. You certainly wouldn't want security to be porked up. I can think of any number of reasons why we wouldn't want that. And by the way, 
If you've ever seen some of these security people, you know that the last thing they need is more pork, or beef, or food of any kind for that matter. Beefed up is one of those terms that has no exact opposite. Nothing ever gets beefed down. They never say, now that Arafat's visit has been concluded, security at the United Nations has been beefed down. Doesn't sound right. Instead, they say, scaled back. Always remember, anything that's been beefed up can be scaled back. Although occasionally, for variety's sake, rather than scaled back, the item may be pared down. Hiked and trimmed are two more good up and down examples. Quite often, during the same session of Congress, defense spending will be hiked while education spending is trimmed. And sometimes, if Congress is in a really bad mood, education spending is slashed and defense spending skyrockets. Well, we've gone from sky high to rock bottom, and we seem to be winding down now. So let me add one last item. I think I may have finally figured out the difference between ramping up and ratcheting up. I'm pretty sure that while ramping up takes place on a continuum, ratcheting up is more a series of increments. But I do find it interesting that as with the beef situation, I rarely hear of ramping or ratcheting down. As for me, I'm at wit's end.